Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So we have a fabrication job to do this week. Uh, this job should have been done weeks ago to be fair, but it's just get, kept getting pushed back and pushed back. So yeah, we need to get on with it now. So this thing here is what we have to make. So the customer sent, the customer has sent me the drawings and what this thing is, is like a tree grab that goes on the front of a little telehandler and it's for ripping well, little trees out, I'm guessing little trees and hedges and things, I think. Now there's three pages of uh, drawings. I'm not going to go into too much details of the drawings because they're not my drawings to, to be showing you really, but yeah, I'm um, sort of converting them from his drawings into mine so it's easier for me to follow along with. Whether it's me that's not very good at following drawings or whether these drawings are just difficult to follow because there's you have to flick through all three pages to find the information that you need just for one part so it's it's taking a bit of getting my head round. I'm getting a bit sick of being studio like a lemon so I think I'm just going to make the bits I'm going to make the simple bits first the frame and the arms and whatnot and then I can work out the only bit that's going to be a bit complicated is where the linkages and the pivots and what have you go because well, one arm opens out with a hydraulic ram and the other arm is rigid so so yeah i'll get on and make these bits first so there's two like box section arms and then sort of the main frame so i'll get them bits done first and then we can work out where all these little bits go for your pivots and for the brackets as well i've got one length of box brought in i won't bore you too much with cutting the box up because you've already seen me do that in was it last week, a week before I was video? Right, so we've got all them bits of box section cut now. So there's the ones for the, like the jaws and uh, them ones are for like the top section of the frame. Uh, this is 70 by 70 by five, I think, box section. You can't get 70 70 box any thicker than that. The drawings are, the customer sort of drew it thinking it was gonna be, I think he put 70 70 by eight, but you, you can't physically get 70 70 b8 box section so I've made it out the thickest box section thickest side wall you can get in that size but it should be plenty thick enough anyway for what it is because it's only on a little machine these ones here so that's like an upright that's like a cross piece and then there's a diagonal that goes in there but the angle I can cut one angle in the saw but I can't do the other because it's like over 45 or less than 45 whichever so what I've done is I've I've just drawn a, a plate like that with the right angle on it and I've, I've cut that out and I can sit that up again there and I can just draw across that and then that gives me the right angle on one end and then I've already cut that end so I marked on this side I'll take that out and I marked it on the other side and then I'll just have to cut that out with the grinder 
do that. I've just cut this out for someone as well. Yeah, Island cow. Well, yeah, slice that off the grinder and then mark the other one. And hopefully that should fit in where I want it to fit. And then uh, get my fixture table set up to to make them both the same. Are you impressed? Oh, I'm impressed anyway. I've not managed to put any junk under it yet. Don't need to keep it clear underneath because every time you drop something through a little hole, you've got to find it again. steel cut then angles on both ends so I'll start well I'll put the fixtures in place to get these jaws tacked together first um, and I've, I've, when I cut all these I made sure that like the seam in the box is all going to be looking inwards same with these this frame at the top so that seam they're the two uprights so the seam's going to both be looking in and that's the top and the seam looking down and then when I tack these together, I'll try and make the seam so you can't see it. I've got some uh, sound cancelling headphones as well now, so I can listen to music and protect my hearing at the same time. Obviously with YouTube, I can't have music on in the background, so now with these I can still listen to music. Right, so that was really easy. So I've not had to square anything because that hole 
is into that hole, that hole's into that hole. Same with that. Same with them. So they can't not be square. And then I've just sat that in there where it fits best and then put them up against it, up against it and clamped it down. A little bit bigger at one end, but I feel like it's no problem. But, uh, that's nice and easy. So I'll get that one tacked up and then put the other one in, do exactly the same. And then I know that both of them are gonna be absolutely identical. So that's them tacked together now. So both of them are identical. So I don't need this anymore, so I can take these off. And then what I'm gonna do now is tack the top frame together. This top frame here, which is 870 apart, right outside, outside, outside. So if I set one of these up on one of these lines and then count nine lines across, give me 900 mil, and whichever line it is, I can use the numbers on the side and set that like 30 mil off that line which should give me 870. I do that down there and then that should be nice, nice and square nice and quick and square and I don't have to do any measuring.
Right, so that is that set up then. So that's, I've just uh, looked back at the video and it took me less than five minutes to set that up, to like take out the old fixtures and put the new ones in to what it is now. It took me less than five minutes. And then when you measure across there, and bang on 870. So that has saved a lot of time. If I was trying to do that on my old bench, I'd have been ages measuring, trying to get it square. What I do need to do though, is I just need to take a little, a few mil off the end of this. This is slightly too long as this box section. So I take a few mil off and it should fit in better then. So I've, I've cut a couple of mil off end of there and that fits better now. So yeah, I'll get that clamp down and attack that together. This is to thread on this box section here. There's like a hole through that box section and that threads through there. And on the drawer and it is threaded through the bottom one as well, but I don't think that'll be necessary. I think I'll just thread it through the top one and then weld it onto the top of that box section. The customer said if I, if I see anything with the drawings to alter or to make it better or whatever, I can do, that's just, you know, how he wants it, but I can alter a few bits if, if need be, if I think necessary. So I've got that clamped down. Another thing I've just I've just learned is you can measure sort of from there to there to that line. Same on that side. Make sure you like your leg length is the same because there's a bit of variation in the corners, sort of how they fit together. Like this bit could be more one way than it can the other, which means the other bit doesn't come down sort of as far as it could do. So yeah, just measuring off them lines. You can make sure that both legs are exactly the same. Right, that's that tacked together now. So I say I'll leave that and weld that up once it's slotted through the box section. So I need to bring some more box section in now because I want to build this frame here. So there's that's 100 by 100 by box section, which is 114, 1144. Then there's some bits of box section in there as well. So there's two bits to cut at that length and two bits to cut to go in there. So that's what the back of it will look like. So that's that frame I've just tacked together that slots through there. And I weld it onto that bottom box section. This is the brackets that fasten it onto the uh, little telehandler and then there's a ram that goes in this side that opens that jar in and out. I think that one's fixed. There you can see there, look, that one's fixed and that one has a ram in it.
Right, so I've got that 100 by 100 by 6 box section cut. So that's like for the main frame. So I need to cut some squares in here now for that to thread through. So like I said, I'm only going to do it on the top one. I'm not going to bother with the bottom one because I don't think it's necessary. I can't see any advantage for strength wise. Um, so yeah, I've centre marked that and I've centre marked that. I don't really need that one. So I'll lay this on the plasma table now and then get the torch lined up with that centre of that. Make sure it's square with the table and then plasma a hole through it and then turn it over and do the same on the other side. Right, so that's, well, I've cut them holes in that box section and that's all fixtured up 
nice and square. So I'll tack that together and then we'll put that frame, we'll thread that through. I'll have to take some of them uh, clamps out after I've tacked it all together. So I'm using a mixture of them, them shorter ones and squares. Right, so that's all that tacked together now. I made some little spaces, 15 mil spaces to go under there to um, make sure that, you know, make sure it was level with the, or parallel with the rest of the frame. So yeah, I think I'll weld this all, weld all this up now, weld them up, and then I can stu study the drawings a bit more and work out where the pivots need to be. And there's some sort of plates to go on the end, either end, but I need to bring some plate into to plasma them out so yeah weld this up first and then and then uh, do the other bits
Right, so that is that frame welded up now. So, yeah, I just need to make the other bits. But that's all I have time for on that today because I've got to go and help with the harvest now. So, yeah, I'll have to do the rest of it another day. Right, so we're back in the workshop again today and it's Wednesday already. I can't believe how fast time goes. Um, so yeah, we're back on with this tree grab again now. I'm going to make sort of these bits now, these like where the pivots are. But rather than them being two separate ones, I'm going to join them together. So I don't have so many measurements to work out when I'm tacking it all together. But there'll be like one, two, three, four of them and then two outer brackets as well which I think they're all on 60 mil centers from there to there. So that's simply enough. The ones that have been drawn as 10 mil and then I've got an extra bit on them as well, I think. So I'm, well, I am going to 10 mil. There's some coming tomorrow, but I've got an abundance of 15 mil. So I'm going to do them out 15 mil and then not have that little bit extra on there. The extra weight shouldn't be too much of an issue because this box section originally was designed as 70 B70 70 B8 and it's only 70 70 B. I think it's 5.5 so yeah, I've saved a good bit of weight there uh, but yeah it just takes a bit of getting my head round with all the different measurements because they're all adding on to each other as well so it's like 30 mil plus 40 mil plus 30 mil and so on and so forth but anyway yeah I'll get them drawn up and get them cut out
Right, so I've got this drawn, I like the top pivot. <coughs> right, so the, for the top pivot, I've got that drawn, so there'll be a base plate that they're welded onto, and I've made tabs on them, to, so I get the right space in between them. And that is in place of them two. They're welded onto a, well, if you look like a drawing like there, they're welded onto like a base plate as well. So I'm welding them onto an eight mil base plate and using 15 mil for there. That's like the main center one and there, the outside ones, same thing. And that should spread the load better onto the box section. We'll get some plate brought in, some eight mil and some 15 mil and then I can start cutting them out. Right, that's them put into the CNC software then. Got me 8 mil bit of plate on there. The bit of plate's not very flat, but the torch height control will take care of that. So we'll cut them out now. Right, we're on to the 15 mil parts now, so get them far out of that little corner piece over there. Same settings, well, 65 amps, and then you just change the plate thickness in the software and it alters the speed and everything for you. So physically I've not had to change anything apart from the steel. Everything, plasma's still set up the same. And then, uh, yeah, it's just the software that alters it.
So yeah, we'll get them cut out now and then we'll cut the other four bits out of the rest of the plate. Right, so that's them bits cut out. Just want cleaning up now. Obviously they're still hot as well. The tabs at the bottom, and then they sit into there like that. Like that. And then there'll be that one at the top, and then this one in the at the bottom, and then these corner kind of ones. The holes are to ream out yet. I've just well, the holes are. I've done them. What are they? 15 mil, and they need to be 20 mil for the for the ram. And then they're 20 mil, and they need to be reamed out to 25 mil for the pin. But yeah, I'll get all these cleaned up now. And then I was thinking, well, I couldn't decide whether to ream them through now, just tack them together like that, or weld them up onto the plates, and then fasten the plate on its side and ream them through. I think I think I'll do that. I weld them on first, and then ream them through. And then I know I know that the weld hasn't pulled them out of line. Also, if you're after any Siegmund uh, products, whether you want a table or just some clamps or whatever, if you go on Esco website and use Snowball as a discount code, you get ten percent off any Siegmund stuff. I've just had a box turn up from Mac Industries. This will be quite cool, so I'll open this up now. Right, so that is that is what I got from Mac Industries. It's a little chair to sit on. I spent quite a bit of time stood at the computer on the Catawba. Um, so I thought I'd get this, I can sit on that. And also, if I'm TIG welding, it, you can adjust the height of it because it's on a thread. So if I'm TIG welding, I can set it down, I can sit on my bench and I can press on my foot pedal and use it for TIG welding. So yeah, it's pretty good. Is that? It's custom made, so it's Black at the top fades down to white. It's not like Snowball Engineering colours. And then it's got my logo embroidered onto the back as well. It's got hooks on the back so I can hang my welding coat on there. And then it's on caster wheels so I can wheel about wherever I need to be. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. And that can live there. So I've got all these cleaned up now, and I also cut out some of the, the brackets, or the jars that are gonna go onto there, because they're basically the same as these, but 
two of them are the same and then two of them were slightly smaller and the base plates were slightly smaller but same design I'll leave these pivots for now because they're slightly different I'm not quite sure what to do with them yet so I've only, yeah, I've only cut out the ones to go on there so we can get all these welded together now I'll just maybe have to find some spaces to to go in there just to hold them while I weld them up Right, so that's all um, tacked up now. I think first I'll weld like, the tabs round. Hopefully that'll stop them pulling a bit. I don't know, I won't be able to reach inside there very well, but that's just what it said on the drawing, 20 mil spacing, and then a 40 mil spacing on them bigger ones.
Right, so I've got them welded up. They're just, well, they're about cool now. And I've got them welded up, and then I've just got that bit of box section just sat in there while they cool down so it doesn't nip up too much. So that's them done. I've got this one set on the mill, ready to make the hole to the size it should be. Now, I thought I had a 20 mil reamer, but I can't seem to be able to find it. Or either I haven't got one or I can't find it. But I have got this 20 mil slot drill, so I might see how accurate of a hole that'll do. Just drill it through with that. If not, I'll have to order a reamer. But yeah, I'll use the edge finder first, find the edge of that, then I want to be 60 mil off there, and then straight through. I'll, I'll just guess that way, because that way is not that critical. But, yeah, to follow the drawing, it needs to be 60 mil off the base. So I'll have to move the bracket further up on the angle plate because it's going to hit there. So I'll have to move it up nearly to the top. Right, so that's that one drilled through. We'll try a pin through that now, make sure that's all right before we do any of the others. So yeah, that's all right, as I said. Nice and tight. I can't give it off now. Yeah, it's as good as what it'd be with a reamer anyway, so do the others now well I have a 25 mil reamer so it's only the 20 mil holes that I need to drill with the slot drill right so I think that'll do for part one um, it's Thursday now I'll carry on with this tomorrow but I need time to edit it I don't want to spend all my Saturday editing so I'll edit what you've seen tonight 
and then uh, yeah you'll see the rest in part two enjoy the video thanks for watching and i'll see you next time